بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The drone communicates with the ground station through the exchange of navlin messages. In this video, I will present an overview of these messages and their structure. It is not intended to go in details, but rather to give an introduction to how these messages are built and exchanged. You can refer to the link presented in this slide for more details about Mavlink messages and their structure. The first thing to know is that all Mavlink messages contain a header appended to every payload of the message. The header contains information about the message and the payload contains the data carried out by the message. The total Mavlink message has a length of 17 bytes, which includes 6 bytes for the header, 9 bytes for the payload, and 2 bytes for the checksum. The checksum is intended to verify the integrity of the message and that it was not altered during the transmission. The Mavlink message header format is presented in the following table. The header contains a packet start sign encoded into one byte which indicates the starts of the packet. The byte with index 1 corresponds to the payload length that is encoded on one byte for a value between 0 and 255. Byte with index 2 refers to the packet sequence, which indicates the incremental sequence number of the packet by a value between 0 and 255. If the sequence number reaches 255, it is reset back to 0. The fourth field is the system ID, and the system ID is an important parameter which identifies the system that can be a drone or any vehicle running the autopilot. The fact it is encoded in 8 bits restricts the total number of vehicles to 256, including the ground station. So this means that we cannot have more than 255 vehicles managed by one ground station because of the system ID is encoded only on one byte. It has to be noted that the Mavlink protocol imposes that the ground station has a system ID equal to 255. The component ID is the identifier of the component sending the message inside the system. For the moment there is no subsystem or component so it will be of no use. The message ID is an important field. It indicates the type of message being carried out in the payload. For example, if the message ID is 0, this means that the message is of type heartbeat, which is periodically sent every one second to indicate that the system is active. Another example, if the message ID is equal to 33, this indicates that the payload carries out GPS coordinate of the system. The data field represents the payload, and finally, the two last bytes represent the checksum. In what follows, we will present a sample of the main Mavlink messages and comments. In what follows, we present a sample of the main Mavlink message. The heartbeat message is the most important Mav message in Mavlink. It indicates the presence of the vehicle system and that it is active. A vehicle should send the heartbeat message periodically, generally every one second, and it must be sent to the ground station to tell the latter that it is alive. This is a mandatory message, so that the ground station can make sure that the drone is active. In addition to the header, the message payload contains important information about the vehicle. The first field is the type and indicates the type of the vehicle. There are 15 predefined types, including quadcopter, helicopter, plane, rover, and others. The autopilot field indicates the type of the autopilot. There are several types defined in the MAV autopilot enumeration structure. For example, 0 indicates a generic autopilot, 1 indicates the Pixhawk autopilot, 3 indicates Ardu Pilot Mega, which is compatible with Arduino, among other autopilots as well. The base mode field indicates different operation modes. It is encoded in 8 bits. There are 8 predefined flags from 2 power 0 to 2 power 7. For example, 2 power 7 equal to 128 indicates that the motors are armed. 2 power 2, which is equal to 4, indicates that the auto mode is enabled. 0 indicates that the custom mode is enabled. The custom mode indicates the autopilot specific flag, and the custom mode is interpreted in addition to the base mode. So both the custom mode and the base mode allow to determine the operation mode of the vehicle. There are predefined values such as 0 for stabilized mode, 4 for guided mode, 10 for autonomous mode, 
11 for return to launch mode, 9 for land mode, 2 for alt hold, and 5 for loiter. We will provide a comprehensive overview of the different flight modes in Ardo Pilot in the next video. It has just to be noted now that the base mode and the custom mode together will allow to define the operational mode. So if the custom mode is enabled in the base mode, in this case, we're going to look at the custom mode flags and depending on the flag, if it is zero, it's stabilized mode, if it is four, it is guided mode and so on. The system status field represents a flag that indicates the state of the system. For example, 4 indicates that the vehicle is active, 5 indicates that it is in critical state, 2 indicates that the system is calibrating, 1 indicates that the system is booting, 3 indicates that the system is standby. So the system status field gives us an information about what the system is doing right now. Finally. The Mavlink version field indicates the version of the Mavlink. This slide shows a concrete example of the Mavlink message. In this example, we see in the right side the binary serialized stream of the Mavlink packet and in the left side we see the equivalent JSON representation of the payload. So here in the right side we can see it's the binary stream that is actually sent and here we can identify these values that represent the payload of the heartbeat message. So we have custom mode equal to zero, the base mode 81, so we can see 81 here, the autopilot equal to three, uh, it's one of these, the system status, the system ID equal to one, and so on. And here the message ID is equal to zero, it means that we have a heartbeat message as we already explained before. So the blue characters in the right side shows the payload of the Mavlink packet, as I already explained. And the base mode here is equal to 81. So 81, it corresponds to 64 plus 16 plus 1. So the base mode 81 corresponds to 64 plus 16 plus 1, which means the custom mode is enabled because we have the value of 1. The stabilized mode is enabled for value 4. And the manual input is enabled for the value 64. So 81, it means that we have custom mode, stabilized mode, and manual input, uh, and manual input. We can see that the custom mode is equal to zero, which means stabilized mode for a quadcopter, as we already explained. The system ID is equal to one, and this should be unique for every drone. It is possible to change the system ID of the vehicle by setting a new value to the parameter this map sys id we will illustrate how to do this at a later stage using a ground station and the message id is well equal to zero and refers to the heartbeat message this slide shows the java implementation of the heartbeat message and it is easy to observe that all fields presented in the previous slide are attributes of the class and are encoded as in the specification. It has to be noted that there is a method called pack that serializes the payload data into binary array for sending it as a binary stream over the network. In addition, there is a method unpack which deserializes the binary stream and extracts the values of the fields. We will see in more details how to use these functions when we build our own ground station like MavProxy. This slide illustrates the heartbeat message in the APM Planner 2 ground station. It is possible to see that all values of the fields of the heartbeat message introduced earlier. We can see that the heartbeat is received at a frequency 0.9 Hz, which means 0.9 message per second, which is almost the one message per second according to the measured frequency. The system ID is shown in the line MAV001 which means a system ID equal to one. In this slide, we can observe the system status message with the message ID equal to one. This message typically carries information about the onboard control sensors present in the map and which one are enabled or disabled. It also provides information about the battery status and the remaining voltage. 
In addition, it provides information about the communication errors. This slide illustrates a concrete example of the system CQ message. The remaining battery is shown to be equal to 62%. The following slide shows the content of the system CQ message as observed in the APM2 planner ground station. The following slide shows the content of the system status message as observed in the APM2 planner ground station. The last message presented in this video, among the very numerous other messages, is the global positioning message with an ID equal to 33. It represents the filtered GPS location given by the GPS. The important information carried out in this message is the latitude, longitude, and the altitude, all of them encoded into 4 bytes. The values of the latitude and the longitude are multiplied by 10 power 7. The altitude is expressed in millimeters. It also provides information about the speed of the vehicle around the three axes, in addition to the orientation referred to as heading. This slide illustrates an example of the global positioning message. For example, the latitude is equal to minus 35.36 and the longitude is equal to 149.16 and the altitude is 58.40 meters. The following slide shows the concrete implementation of the global positioning system in Java. It can be observed that all fields are attributes of the class and encoded uh, as in the specification. The pack and unpack are used for binary serialization and deserialization of the message, like for the heartbeat message and also for the system city message and any other message. The following slide shows the global position message on the APM Planner 2 ground station. So far, we presented a sample of mapping messages and next we will present a sample of command messages. So the difference between the mapping message and the mapping command is that the mapping message is sent from the drone to the ground station and the Mavlink command is usually sent from the ground station to the drone. Long commands are commands that can be defined with up to seven parameters, as you can see here. So we have seven parameters from param1 to param7. Every parameter is a float encoded into 32 bits of precision. The long command needs to specify the target system, that is the ID of the system that is going to execute the command, and the target component, which is the component of the system responsible for the execution of the command. The command field refers to the type of command to be executed. It is defined in the MAV-CMD command enumeration. And for example, the command number 21 refers to a land command, whereas a long command with a number 22 refers to a takeoff command. A command of 20 refers to return to launch, which is the starting position. There are around 60 command types defined in the MAV CMD command enumerations. The confirmation field indicates if the message was sent for the first time with value 0 and other value represents a confirmation of the message. The seven parameters depends on the type of the command. For example, for the land command, all the seven parameters are useless. In the takeoff command, the seventh parameter represents the altitude requested by the takeoff. So we can see that the use of one of the seven parameters depends on the type of the command. Here is a first illustration with the takeoff command implementation in Java. It can be observed that the type of the message created is the message command long which refers to a long command. The target system is assigned to the system ID of the drone. The command type refers to the constant corner underscore takeoff, and this constant is equal to 22. The seventh parameter is set to the desired altitude. You can see here msg.param7, so this is the seventh parameter, okay, is equal to the altitude of uh, that we would like the drone to, to take off. In this slide, we have an illustration of the land command. It can be observed that the type of message is also the same, um, msg command long, and the command type refers to the constant land, and this corresponds to the value 21, and there is no additional parameter that needs to be set. Okay, so having this command, now if it is sent to uh, the, uh, the copter, in this case it will execute the land command and the copter will land.
Another important command is the set mode command. This command allows to set the flight mode of the autopilot. It takes as argument the target system that will execute the command, that is the, the drone, uh, the system ID of the drone, the base mode and the custom mode. So three different attributes. This slide shows an, an illustration of the implementation of the set mode command in Java. The custom mode is specified by a number that encodes the requested mode. Now, having a good understanding of the different Mavlin messages and commands, we will provide an overview of the different flight modes available for a quadcopter using the APM Copter stack of the Ardu Pilot Autopilot software. Thanks for watching.